Welcome to the pre-recording of lecture 13 of MCS 481 and uh, we continue the connection between database queries and geometry, in particular uh, range queries. Um, in the last lecture we introduced KD trees, we discussed the construction of a KD tree. We will start by uh, introducing range queries on KD trees. Uh, then the main point of this lecture is the introduction of range trees, the construction and also searching in a range tree. A range tree is a multi-layered uh, geometric data structure, as we will see. Range trees are also provided in the software Seagull, and we will very briefly flash up the documentation. So Seagull is very well documented, even if we are not going to if you wouldn't be using it, it's still worthwhile uh, to look into the documentation. Okay, Let, we are now in the middle of the fifth week. We're also in the middle of the fifth chapter of our textbook. So we are um, getting close to one third of uh, the material in this course. So this slide summarizes what we did in the previous lecture. In a way, I'm trying to make the lectures as self-contained as possible. Um, let's remind ourselves that we are dealing with database queries. So for example, we have a database that stores the salary and the number of children of all the employees. A range query is starting with a salary range and uh, the number of children, the range of the number of children between two and five. So we want to list all employees within the salary range and which have between two and five children. A KD tree uh, can be used for that purpose. We saw that uh, a KD tree consists of recursively splitting the data set using a vertical split at the even levels in the tree and using a horizontal split in the odd levels in the tree. Uh, the main result of last time was that the split can be done in n log n time. The recurrence is the same as for merge sort, uh, but instead of doing a merge, we're doing a, a split that is linear in the size of the points. Uh, the log n comes from the fact that uh, it's balanced in the end and uh, we have only at most as many layers as the logarithm of the total number of points. KD trees, like any trees, they can be stored uh, in a storage that is proportional, directly linearly proportional to the size of the set. And then uh, the third and actually not least point of last lecture was that we executed some queries from within Python because the package uh, DD spatial searching was actually wrapped and was available also to the Python programmer. So this is the uh, previous lecture in one slide. Um, if you wondered um, you can scroll back to the previous uh, lecture, but if you wonder what a KD tree now really is, well, here is an example. Uh, the example that was used also in the previous lecture. We have eight points in the plane, so these are these eight red dots. And uh, the set of eight points is partitioned uh, with vertical split at the beginning, the L1, the first line, separates the points, cuts the points evenly. Then the lines 2 and line 3 are the lines through the middle uh, of the 
two halves, uh, but now we split horizontally. And then we continue doing this recursively. What is shaded in green in this picture is the region in the plane and the corresponding um, region in the KD tree. So a region in the plane is the intersection of half planes. Uh, the, um, uh, uh, the half planes are having the boundaries, the splitting lines. And in the tree, uh, the splitting lines are actually are going to be the boundary lines. Uh, so we, you can see L1 and L3 are actually the lines that are used to bound the region. And they also used in the tree to navigate. We go into the right of L1, we go into the left, or we go in below L3. So we have the convention, what is at the right is at the right node, naturally, but then for the horizontal splits, what is at the left is below, what is at the right is above. Okay, so that is the definition of a region. Now we have uh, ranges, and ranges can be exactly matched to a region. Uh, if that is the case, then it's all fine. But here you see the yellow. Uh, the yellow is representing a range, a query range. So, and you see here that it overlaps with uh, several regions. Uh, so it contains the points 2, 4, and 5, and those points are all in uh, separate regions. So that makes that uh, the we have to be a bit careful when we do the queries. Okay, so here is the pseudocode for a query. Um, it's, um, we are given on input a KD tree, typically the root. And then we also have a range, and we want to list all points uh, in the tree in that range. Um, so the base case, it's a recursive algorithm. So the, burst, the base case is uh, to check whether we are already at the leaf, and then uh, we see if the value stored at the leaf is in the range, R, then we will report it. Otherwise, uh, we will uh, check if the left child, that the region represented with the left child is entirely in the query, then we will report the entire subtree. So the, the report of the subtree, that was one of the subroutines that we discovered, uh, that we discussed uh, last time. It, was the first exercise also of lecture 12. Otherwise, uh, if the region is not entirely in there, if there is some overlap, then we will um, recursively work. Um, so we will call the uh, searching of the KD with uh, the left child. All right, so then the right child is just uh, the same. So there are 10 statements here, but the last four statements are actually mirroring uh, the left and the right. Okay, so now actually we should pause a little bit and um, a, a good exercise would actually also be to look at uh, the examples uh, to see what happens. Let me see if I good. Um, yes, I can. Uh, so this is nice. Uh, so I have here the yellow query region, and then I have the tree, the KD tree that is corresponding to it. So I want the yellow region contains the points 2, 4, and 5. Um, so as you can see, none of these uh, regions in the KD tree is actually 
entirely uh, containing um, a left child or a right child. So in this example here, we will not do the report of the subtree. So what will actually happen is that we will report a node as it is uh, a leaf inside the region. So if we, for example, we navigate to the left, um, so L2 is inside uh, the region, but um, you can see the point one is not in there. So we will have to go to L5. And here you can see that with L5, what is under L5 are the points three and four, but we cannot report the entire subtree. We have to go to the leaf that contains the fourth point. Okay, so it's a good exercise now to essentially go very carefully through this example again and check how this range query would be done or actually something that I should have done before introducing the algorithm is essentially uh, looking at the um, the yellow region and seeing what needs to be done to report all the points. Um, okay, so let's go back to the exercises. Um, so the algorithm is at a very high level. We are using the um, primitives uh, indicating if, for example, the region that is uh, represented by the child is entirely contained in the range. Is that a primitive? So uh, that is the question here. So the, the region, so if you are at the node, so when you look at the child, so here I I said just the child, but if there's a left or a right, it doesn't really matter. When you look at the child, you actually know the path of all the lines, so you know the region that is bounded. So you have the coordinates for uh, the height, uh, and also for the left and the right bounds. Is this a test? Can this be running in constant time? So in a way, uh, the first answer would be yes, uh, but know that the depth of the tree is logarithmic in uh, n. So uh, the examples, for example, are too small, but if you would have a million, um, a million points to do the power 20, you would have 20 levels in your KD tree. So you, you may have uh, 20 numbers to uh, up to 20 numbers, that's an upper bound, but you could have up to logarithmic n uh, numbers that describe the region. Um, so the answer is actually no. Um, um, so the correctness uh, verification, uh, it's the purpose of these lectures is that you read the textbook. Um, so at this point, you may want to open the textbook. Um, on the other hand, you can also think about uh, the previous lecture where we also had a search and there we had to worry about uh, the report of the subtree. Um, so here actually this is not so much a worry because you can see on the code here, uh, statement seven and eight, uh, you should actually make the statement that if the region is entirely contained inside the range, then indeed by reporting the subtree you are not reporting too many points. So there are two things that need to be taken care of. 
do we report all the points in the query range and do we actually also only compute those uh, not too many points do we not report too many points so already stating what needs to be proven for the correctness will already give you half of the points um, for this exercise okay so how fast does it go so here is the lemma that we are trying to uh, prove um, so the cost of a search depends on the size of the input it's a square root uh, kind of unexpectedly what is not what should not be unexpected is the uh, output size which we call k in the end if we have to report everything if the query range is really large then well the algorithm will run in linear time proportional to the total size so it is an output sensitive um so where does the square root come from uh, well here is an example um if you have the right child then actually two of the four nodes are intersected um, and two is the square root of four so that's kind of an indication how we get to the square root um, so we actually assume that we have a balanced uh, tree then actually the endpoints are distributed evenly then again the intersection of the two nodes they involve n over four points each of the two nodes uh, so here the triangles i should have said this already with the previous slide the triangles actually represent subtrees so if you are two layers down from the root then actually the number of points that you consider in each subtree so we have now four subtrees is n over four okay as the title of the slide says we are deriving a recurrence relation so here it is um, so the recurrence in the base case is just n uh, we had the n over 4 from the previous slide, uh, so using the fact that this is a balanced tree. And then we had this factor 2 of the 4 nodes. Uh, that's this uh, factor 2. So if we solve this recurrence, if you have taken a course in discrete math, then great. Um, otherwise, you can also run through a software, computer algebra software package, that will also solve this for you. Okay, so the solution of the recurrence is gives you the square root. Um, and there is another observation here that any vertical line intersects uh, the square root of n uh, order of the regions in the KD tree. That's another observation here. okay um, so there we have it then so this is extending the main result from the previous lecture where we shown that uh, linear amount of storage n log n time to build and any rectangular query range takes a square root of n plus k now we will go um, in the Friday lecture, in the lecture that follows uh, lecture 13 and lecture 14, we will say something about higher dimensional KD trees. Uh, you can think of three dimensions where you use splitting planes perpendicular to the coordinate axis. You first split on the plane perpendicular to the x-axis, then to the y-axis, then to the z-axis. Or if you think vertically again, yeah, vertically would be x and y and then uh, the z range.
okay so this can be generalized so the square root is 1 minus 1 over d so you can see when d equals 2 we have the square root all right very good um, but we can actually do better um, so we will see that when we introduce range trees so we are now coming into the second part of this lecture um, the square root of n actually grows uh, along this red line here so we have the curve the red curve um, in some sense the square root of n is actually favorable uh, up to 50,000 certainly well even more than 50,000 although I didn't list the constants here but we will see that we can reduce the query time to uh, the a square of a log of the log of n and that is shown here in blue and you see uh, 10 to the power 5 is um, 100,000 so as soon as you reach 100,000 or actually before that before um, 50,000 100,000 between somewhere is that point uh, you will see that uh, the square root of n is no longer so advantageous um, now there are constants involved it could be that you have to wait till till a million uh, to see this happening if the blue uh, has actually a higher constant here I was simply assuming that they both have constant one if there are some constants that are higher for um, the blue then you may have to work till till one million or otherwise it could even be that um, you may already notice uh, range trees being better at smaller point sizes but in any case uh, we're living in the time of big data now uh, millions billions uh, of data points are no longer so exceptional so uh, this is the motivation for uh, doing something better than kt trees here is then a multi-level data structure i just give the definition first uh, so it's important that it is a balanced binary tree on one coordinate and then for every node in that balanced binary tree it contains an associated tree that takes into account the other coordinate the y coordinate so it's actually a double balanced binary tree and that already may may uh, give you the um, kind of tell you where the square of the logarithm comes from so we have a logarithm in the x coordinate we have the logarithm in the y coordinate okay so this is the idea and also the formal definition uh, they are multi-level data structures so before the nodes indicate d3 the inner nodes contains essentially numbers uh, the height or or the the, the left or right uh, the x coordinate or the y coordinate of the splitting line now actually every node will contain another uh, tree so here is the example I have eight points um, so we can do the balanced binary search tree on the x coordinate so in some sense this is how we started at the previous lecture but if you look to the left child uh, at node with value 2 we have four points sitting in there and uh, in the first coordinate uh, the tree is organized according to the x coordinate so the children are labeled by 0 and 3 um, we can associate now also a balanced binary search tree but 
reordering the points, uh, but now ordering them on the y coordinate. So you see the y coordinate, um, the zero comes last, but now we put it first in this other alternative ordering. So here it is then. Um, so this is not the entire um, the entire uh, tree. Um, so it's just one subtree that is associated to the node with two. So you see we have the other labeling and we apply the same recipe. Um, so you can see how the data set is paired up and we always take the left as the value at the intermediate node or the, the, the left, what is that, the left of the rightmost node. Um, so yeah, so it could be a good exercise to also draw the tree associated to uh, the right of four. And one can also draw then uh, the tree associated to the root uh, v equals 4. And you can uh, draw the entire tree essentially um, with all the associated trees for every node in the tree. Okay, so how do we construct uh, the tree? So we have a range tree. We will const we have a set of points in the plane. Uh, this is the two dimensional, um, and we will return uh, the root. So we will construct uh, first uh, the associate tree for the entire point set on the y coordinate. Uh, we are done essentially if there is only one point, so that's actually the base case. Otherwise, uh, we will split on the uh, x coordinate and recursively build range trees for the left and the right in the partition. And then we have a node that contains uh, the left and the right and then in the middle we have the associated tree on the y coordinate. So recursion is extremely powerful because with eight statements we are there. Okay so um, what may have you nagging already is uh, the storage of these associated trees because it kind of uh, feels like we're going to store too much. Um, now uh, the sorting could also have been a problem but uh, we are still we are sorting twice once on the x coordinate once on the y coordinate and this factor 2 is absorbed in the big O. Um, so as far as time goes uh, with the pre-sorting we will not uh, essentially, well it may take essentially twice as long, um, but what now about uh, this storage? Uh, so that needs a lemma. Um, so uh, the storage is now n log n, uh, no longer n. Uh, why is that? Well, we have the log n factor is the depth of the tree. And then uh, the n factor comes from the associated trees. So um, with every node, and we actually only go log n deep, but we still have to uh, see that. So you could kind of, uh, it's a two dimensional tree. You could think of in one dimension, uh, in the first dimension you have the original tree, but then in the other dimension you have all the other trees. Uh, so it could be nice to actually make a three-dimensional picture like this. Um, so that's if you are very creative. Uh, but the point is that um, there is a cost here. So we will gain this log n square 
search time uh, which is much more favorable uh, compared to the square root but there is a price to be paid uh, the storage okay uh, searching the range tree uh, the searching of the range tree is in also a recursive algorithm um, we are looking for a split node. Uh, so the split node was defined in the previous lecture. A split node is a node, the first node that you find, for which the value lies in the range. Um, so we look first for the split node. If it is a leaf, then we essentially are done. Otherwise, we are proceeding recursively. So searching a range tree, um, if you remember the previous lecture, the skeleton of the searching a KD tree is here present. Uh, so we have this loop starting from the left child, and then there will also be uh, the starting from the right child from the split node. So we do the recursive uh, one-dimensional range queries, uh, but now on the associated trees. And here you can see where the logarithm of n comes in. Uh, logarithm of n in the x-coordinate and the logarithm of n in the searching for the, uh, for the y-values on the associated trees. Okay, so um, we check if the point should be uh, reported. Then we look uh, also the statements 11 till 16. They are mirroring uh, what uh, is on the previous uh, slide. Again, uh, exercise, uh, verify the correctness. Um, you could start out by stating what needs to be proven. Uh, what needs to be proven is that every point that will be reported will be in the range. Um, that means that we will not report uh, too few points, so we not will leave out points that should be reported. And also, we will not report too many uh, points. Um, so one needs then to elaborate further on this. Uh, so there are the checks. Uh, checks if a, so statement 10 has an explicit check in there. Also, the beginning here, statement 3, has an explicit if is there. So if it should be reported, so this covers both cases, um, this is fine. Uh, it requires some arguments and some insight uh, to make sure that these one-dimensional range queries on the associated trees will go well. Uh, also with the proper uh, consideration for the tests in uh, on the value of the node, so the test at statement 6. You could focus um, on one case, uh, so if the correctness of the statement 6 to 9 is valid, then it will also work for the statements um, 13 till 16. So again, you may already have uh, almost half of the credit for this exercise if you can clearly spell out uh, what actually needs to be proven and if you can start making the arguments what I have already just told. Okay, so we are converging to the main result then. Uh, we have the n log n storage. Uh, now we have the search time that is uh, containing the unsurprising element k, the size of the output, could be O n. But then we have the running time, which is quadratic in these logarithm factors. Um, so uh, we count the number of nodes that we visit. Uh, we count the nodes that are visited 
in these associated trees. Um, so these trees are logarithm of n, and uh, the summation on the x also goes for logarithm of n. So the big sigma runs over logarithm of n. So in some sense we split uh, the sum of the big O's. The second part, all the nodes that we will visit, will be part of the output. So that's proportional to the output size. Okay, that's basically it. Um, or however, last and certainly not least, um, let's look at what Seagull has to offer. So a good starting point is always the package overview. Um, so last time we navigated to the section spatial searching and sorting. So we ended up in lecture 12 at DD, spatial searching. Uh, now we have to scroll a little bit farther, uh, so we have to scroll to the DD range uh, trees. Um, so you see uh, what they are. Uh, they allow to perform window queries. Um, so they are optimized for fast uh, queries. So if you click on this, uh, so then uh, we get to uh, the documentation. Um, so even, unfortunately, uh, so I should probably have emphasized this, so I looked at the wiki of the uh, Python bindings and it's not listed among the available Seagull packages. So I'm saying not yet, so this could be something that hopefully might not longer be true in the future. Uh, but what I was about to say that even if you are not really using C++, it's still very good to essentially look and scroll through, uh, so this is C++, but it contains uh, here the picture of uh, these um, range trees, which are multi-layered uh, trees. Um, so um, alternatively, you could also picture them in a three-dimensional picture where the for the two-dimensional cases, where you lay out the uh, trees on the x-coordinates in a vertical fashion, and then you have somehow uh, with on pages perpendicular to uh, the picture of the tree, you have the associated trees. So this describes uh, in great generality. So you also see the picture of the d-dimensional range trees. So in some sense, this picture makes the transition to next lecture, where we will uh, explain uh, more about the higher dimensional uh, alternatives. There is also the assumption that we made, uh, if you remember very early on um, in the previous lecture, that all the coordinates would be different from each other. And that's very unrealistic as far as, say, the number of children uh, is concerned. If you have discrete data and uh, the range is rather narrow, so typically uh, people don't have 15 children anymore. Uh, so if the we, we, we can't really make that assumption uh, that um, all the coordinates are distinct from each other. Okay, um, if you are a C++ programmer and if you have installed um, Seagull, so then here it is. Uh, here is how you can make your range query and then also make your range tree and then execute uh, the window query. So um, C++ can be complicated, but the test programs are all extremely small. Okay, I am closing in on the end. Um, we may cover segment trees uh, in the next uh, chapters, um, but uh, this is 
almost all what I had to say. So currently we are in the middle of chapter 5 in our textbook. Um, so I hope that at this point the connection between geometry and databases is kind of uh, starting to become clear. Uh, the activities that are strongly recommended uh, is to think about the exercises that are listed. Um, in a way, even though I now have almost 10 minutes left, I could uh, have explained more, uh, but these exercises are essentially inviting you, encouraging you to write your own explanations, the missing points here. We have looked at the Seagull uh, documentation um, and also the exercises in the textbook. Um, the textbook is at more towards the graduate level, but still I hope that the lectures may provide you with some uh, basics uh, to start reading and doing also the exercises in the textbook. So this is the middle lecture of chapter 5 in the middle of the fifth week. Uh, in the next lecture we are uh, talking then more about generalizations of the KD trees and the range trees.